without customers, you don't have a business. And without employees helping you, you don't have the business. And without the boss, needless to say. Hi, I'm Edith. Welcome back to yet another episode of Talking Shop with Property Bank. Today, we're going to dive into this topic, um, office hunting in Singapore. How to delight your customers, your employees, and your boss. Let's go. Number one, why do we need to understand these three groups of people? Because they all have diverse needs. And you know that without customers, you don't have a business. And without employees helping you, you don't have the business. And without the boss, needless to say. So these three groups are essential. Let's go and dissect one by one. So the number one most important group is your customers. Well, you look at Apple. Why do they have an Apple store when everybody knows Apple, but yet you see the queues right outside? And Apple spends millions of dollars designing their Apple flagship store. Why is it so? This is because they have a customer-centric design. And that means also the experience the customers can have in the store with the friendly um, you know, support people. And of course, um, you know, looking at all the merchandise without just Googling away. Mm. So customer-centric design and customers as the first group is so critical. So your employees are your secret to success, to win over your competitors. So I would love to share with you a case. Recently, we have a company which is um, right-sizing itself because of hybrid work. That means to say that they reduce about 50% of their workspace. Then in this company itself, there are two debate teams. One say that, hey, look, you know, it's hybrid work, and which means that each employee only travel to office two or three times a week. Why bother? You know, we should look at saving costs, look at slightly further away. You know, it doesn't bother because it's only two or three times a week. And then the other group says that, well, you already saved some rental because of right sizing. And that means to say that we can pass this benefit to find a better grade office. And because employees are only coming two to three times and they multiply by the number of employees, you want them to be mesmerized. You want them to feel war about the office. And by feeling war, what does it mean? You know, it has collaborative space. It has all the gourmet coffee. And you just want to war your employees so that they work extra hard for you. Isn't that the right mindset for the next search for your office? What about the boss? He or she is the most important. After all, we receive salary from the boss. Okay, I have a case whereby the boss stays in somewhere which doesn't need MRT accessibility because he drives. And the rest of the employees, young people, they travel by MRT. So I met with this uh, HR and finance manager who has a big headache because the boss feels that, look, everywhere in Singapore is accessible. And the finance and HR manager knows that it is so difficult to have the employees being hired. So I don't have a right solution to you. But think of this, if you are having a small team, then of course, um, you know, that number of people that travel by uh, public transport, the boss can do something to remunerate. And think about the other scenario, whereby you have a large workforce and the boss drives. So, well, I put it in your hands to make the decision. It's all about comfort and after all, the boss pays. If you are finance or HR manager deciding on the move, you dislike dissatisfying any of these three stakeholders. So I call this a successful office balancing act. So we have this uh, overseas company that's new to Singapore. They look at the uh, uh, central business district first. And then in order to satisfy these uh, three stakeholders, especially the boss uh, pocket, um, they decided on one trade-off. So the trade-off is uh, the location. So they moved to um, away from central business district, but yet connected by the MRT. And this is a new development which has all the amenities from end of trip facilities to function rooms that they can rent. So the whole ambience is a grade A like uh, kind of environment. So if you are at the cross juncture, 
you are not very sure what to trade off, you just have to decide one trade off. If you are not too sure, talk to us. Last but not least is about future proving your office. So think long term. Do you want this space to still be um, you know, relevant for the next 5 to 10 years? I know you will be saying that the lease term is not that long, but that's the thinking process and the thought leadership that I want you all to have. So if you are at the cross juncture, not very sure what trade-off to make, how to satisfy these three stakeholders, talk to us. One number away, which is 8333-1338. And if you like the contents that we are producing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on our contents. Yeah, we see you there the next episode.